goes James. James had to start on his feet there, or start on his knees because he is so tall. Come on, James. All right. Here's the first look at this obstacle. Ah, interesting. I don't know if any, I honestly never thought about using the pinwheel and going forward. Nice, James. Nice. Awesome, easy clear for James up over the top of that. And now we're taking a look at the spider wall. For those of you that pay attention to the A&W scene, James actually dislocated his shoulder on a jump into the spider wall. He has just really started coming back to competition um, since that injury. Doing pretty well so far. Clearing through the first five in about, I think our time limit here is 4.15. It might be 4.30. I'll have to confirm that for you guys. So just under 45 seconds if we're at 4.30 there, or 4.15. James getting lots of love from the live stream. Nice work. And now let's take a look. Yeah, here we go. Nice work. James getting that hook in right on the first swing. I think you'll see a lot more elite athletes going for that move here. And phenomenal work on this obstacle. A one-handed hang on that enormous cannonball is definitely not easy. All right, guys, let's take our first look at this wingding transfer. You gotta go side swing, side swing. 90 degree kick, 45 degree kick. And James deciding to go front facing. It looks like it's gonna pay off. That actually is tech I haven't really seen an athlete execute. The wingdings are hung from the lowest attachment point. And I don't think that this is gonna be the move that is hard for the elites based on what I'm seeing right now. Fantastic. Sydney, if you get up on the box and just pull it, that'll work best. Yep. Nice work from James here. <laughs> and a nice grab on the UFO. Great clear out of James. Onto the cliffhangers here. Yep. Awesome work out of James so far. Going for this tough transfer here. Ah. And a great run by James. Nice job, James. Sammy? Can you just go get the music turned down? I don't want Facebook to shut us off for copyright infringement. A good atmosphere for our athletes, but also want you guys in the live stream to be able to hear what's going on. All right, here we go, Emmett. Good, Emmett. Keep breathing, buddy. Keep breathing. Moving, An easy breathe, buddy. hop Come down. On, right Emmett is from Vitality Obstacle Fitness. Easy work for Emmett. Nice. Right into that spider wall. No problem with that 90 degree jump in or 45 degree jump in. Three to 45 here to this point. And I forgot to check to see what the time limit is. Somebody remind me of that when I'm headed back after this runner.
Ooh, nice, nice moves behind the head with that cane right there. All right, here we go, Emmett. Hooking that go, right away. Nice, Emmy. Big back swing. Great work. <laughs> these elites are making these first couple moves that proved challenging for the adult division look easy, even with the addition of that enormous cannonball. Here it is. Ooh. Good control out of Emmett. Nice work. Nice work out of Emmett. And unfortunately for Emmett, just missing that dismount. Just too much this season, but got the qualifying spot for regionals. We're gonna see how she does. And she threw it. Nice. That move requires a lot of confidence to get through it. Great to see Alyssa beasting through it. And building up that swing. Needs a little bit of time. I think we'll see her go one more big back swing before she goes to the top. And she's still okay. She's still good. That must have been a hit to the face, but she is still in this. Okay. Uh, and unfortunately for Alyssa, just not able to stick that. Had a really great save on those boxes. Stream. Jimja has been a constant presence. Ooh, time limit. All right, let me take a 4.30, guys. Time limit is 4.30. Thank you for that reminder. And we're off here. Great work here. You see more of that underbar technique. I don't really like that technique to build swing, but if it works, it works. There it is. Nice work for Vince getting through that. Nice stick. Great work out of Vince here. Now, huh? Okay. Now, what we saw in the adult division was athletes were getting through to this point quickly in about 30 seconds. We're seeing more like a 45 seconds to a minute for these athletes, and I think it's because of that pretty significant swing to get to the top of the triple decker. So. You got it, Ben. Good. And clear for Vince. Opting to go back to the start platform before getting that hook in.
and Vince is deciding to give up on getting that cannonball out of the original hook and going for building the swing. He just had to build a pretty heavy swing not that long ago. And ah, oh, so close. Oh gosh, I'm bummed. You got it, buddy. Keep moving. All right. I haven't ever seen X compete before. He's taking a pretty casual approach here. Very, very casual approach to his run right now. Not really something that I would expect to see out of him. Let's watch this build though, see if we're getting any bigger moves here. There it is. And that's the type of build we want to see. One or two swings, I'm sure we'll probably see some of our really strong power athletes getting that maybe in one swing, but two is definitely the gold standard. You really don't want to spend too much time. I think we get somebody in one swing. Like one back swing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice work. Now, X is the slowest to this point we've seen so far, um, but only by about 10 seconds, so not too, too bad. The efficiency on that swing buildup was definitely a benefit to him. And getting the clear. This is still a very interesting and very casual approach. stuck in the water here. Definitely enough strength to get to that one. Getting some love from everyone here. Really hoping he can pull it through. Getting some advice to go back to the start platform to reset. All right, I think we might see him go for a big move to the giant cannonball. Let me see if I can get a little bit more of a better angle here for all of you guys. He has spent a lot of time on this obstacle. Be deliberate, up and back, yeah! Just getting that. X does not have a lot of time left to get through these next two obstacles, or well, several obstacles for the rest of the course. Does not have a lot of time. He's gonna have about 35 seconds on the clock. He's gotta move, he's gotta go. I'm hoping we can maybe see him get the complete on this. Ah, and just tapped out. Now, during our pre-comp hype video, John actually highlighted Alyssa as somebody who would be really good on this course because she has a lot of strength when it comes to big power moves and that's definitely something that you're going to need on this course. Oh no! And oh yes, all at the same time! The best finish I have seen! <laughs> Wow. 
one of our picks. Easy. That's what I was looking for, you guys. That one backswing. Not surprised that that came out of Lucas. Moving really quickly. Hopping on over to the side. Going to be efficient right here. You'll see him moving quickly through this. Looking to totally skip that last hook with the ring, which is definitely more efficient. Now, here's what I will say about Lucas right now. He is moving efficiently, but not at breakneck speed, right? So a lot of guys, it's a big amount of effort for them to move super quickly through the course, but he looks calm, he looks smooth. Smooth is fast, and I think that that's the right approach for the athletes to take on this course because you need a lot of power. You don't want to be wasting your energy trying to go fast. You want to be smooth. So I think smooth is fast is the, uh, the name of the game here. This move absolutely in Lucas's wheelhouse. Here we go. We should see him get this easy. That first transfer is a pretty easy one. The second one coming from behind is not quite so simple. <laughs> Except for Lucas, of course. And now we've got to get this dismount here. Light work right now, everybody. Light work for Lucas Reale. Guys, we're going to see a clear here. I'm just calling it right now. Nice work. And now eyeing up this UFO. Easy work for Lucas. So James McGrath is currently in first place. Lucas blazed past that time. So now we are getting on to the rocky cliffs. Taking a minute or two to breathe. A minute or two to build up that energy back in the muscle. Now, you'll see more of these athletes going with the crossover move. Oh, no. Come on, get those feet up. Oh. They don't want too much talk. Chalk, excuse me. Woo! Great fly forward. Here we go, Mia. All right. Time for this tough balance obstacle. Yes. Great commitment. A, so Sarah, I won't be able to give you the full run order. I can give you the next couple of runners for sure. Um, but if you go to the Ultimate Obstacles page, you'll see the run order there. Nice work out of Mia. Who would I say is currently the ninja to beat in the sport? It depends on the course, man. It really depends on the course. If you've got a speed course, um, True Becker, definitely one of the athletes that you're going to have to be concerned about. If it's an endurance course, I would say we're talking Luke Dillon right now is, is pretty tough to beat in endurance courses. I think Luke's going to do really well. I am not super familiar with Wong as an athlete, so we're just gonna have to watch his run and see how he does. Oh, good save. While we're going through this, 
little Wong's run here while he's building up this swing. I want to go back to that question. Who is the top ninja to beat in this sport? You know, it's not like gymnastics, right? So gymnastics, you've got Simone Biles, clearly the best in the sport um, based on the level of tricks that she's capable of. But ninja's a little bit different. You know, uh, ninjas can throw ridiculous tricks and flares and have super great training videos, but it all comes out on the course, right? And courses can be unpredictable. It's not a measurable system. Great stick from Guang right there. I would say some of your proven athletes, names come to mind like Matt Bradley, True Becker, um, definitely the top guys this season in my opinion. We're gonna see them compete a little bit later. Caleb Bergstrom is another name that comes to mind. Um, and you know, tons of ninjas that are out west that, you know, that, those ninjas don't always get a lot of highlight. I think in the New England region, we're a little bit spoiled. We have so many strong ninjas out here that we kind of forget about other regions of the United States where there are some absolute monsters. Um, so really difficult to say who's the top ninja in the sport, just because it is a little bit unpredictable right now. We don't have a set course. I think we might see Gauntlet trying to change that. I don't know if the plans for Gauntlet are gonna be, it's the same course every year, so the athletes can practice those skills and become the best. But then of course Gauntlet would have to become the standard, right? So I could go on about this all day, as I'm sure you guys have noticed. All right. All right, we are here on Pirate Ship. I wish Wong had reset there a couple times, but not too much grip strength getting used up here. These elite athletes, they train all the time. And we'll see if he goes for the, the power move or if he goes for the precision move here. Going for the precision, I don't like the way he's set right now. Hopefully, uh, still keeping that L there. Ah! And it just looked like he was about to slip off. Donnelly uh, did the same thing when he got to Pirate Ship. Reached out and used his height to grab the cannonball before leaving the start platform. I've, I've said it before, there's, Ninja really doesn't favor the taller, larger athletes that much, but there are a couple places in the course where it is helpful for you today. Like right here, barely had to step on that before he had the reach out. Had to generate that swing though. Easy work. Scuffing up those shoes. As an adult athlete that's gone through the children's spider wall, I imagine that that's what this feels like right now for Ryan. Thankfully, he got through it pretty quickly. So Ryan made it through the front half of the course, about the same pace as most of the other athletes. Looking like he's having a little trouble figuring this out. Now, there's nothing really wrong per se with taking a little time on this obstacle other than it can be done quickly. And the longer that you are on an obstacle, the more energy you are taking. And as we have told you all, you need it for this course. All right, let's see if he gets this move that he was planning. Ooh, and an awkward angle with the hand there prevented him from locking that in. So here is where that long reach can really benefit um, Ryan. Nice, nice. With the oh no. With the awkward angle of that larger can. Pete likes to go speedily. There we go. 
compete. Nice. Good work for Pete. <gasps> oh my gosh, Pete Dillman. Pete Dillman. Good movement for Adam, good movement. Hard to tell how a run's gonna go getting through the Spartan Wall. It's a pretty easy obstacle. Biggest thing you can tell is the pace that they're going to take. You might see some athletes blazing through it, but you also might see a few athletes taking a more casual approach, knowing that they want to conserve their energy for later on in the course. No need to waste that energy on these kind of earlier, simpler obstacles, except right here. You kind of need a little energy here to get to the top of that triple decker, as we call it. Woo! That was a dope save, y'all. I don't know if I caught all of that on camera, but that foot flew behind him. He had only three points of contact on that wall at one point. So that was insane to watch. We've seen quite a few saves like that over this weekend, over not over last weekend. We didn't have this obstacle last weekend. Here, Coach Tiege telling him to get out of here. I agree. Don't want to spend too much time on this obstacle. Simpler obstacle to get over. Lock-offs right here from Adam. Nice control. I'm hoping those lock-offs help him out on this large cannonball here. And he is going for the big dismount. He's really gonna need to throw it. Woo! Just making that right there. We've seen quite a few close calls on that um, <laughs> quite a few close calls on that dismount sorry guys oh going front facing we saw james mcgrath do this earlier and it worked out for him not liking how that feels again those wing nuts are at the very bottom attachment point and for those of you who have dgs oh this looks good this looks good big throw ah bummer for Adam. Controlled pace for Zach here. Not trying to go too fast through these first couple of obstacles. Now I'm interested at this development because we've heard from a couple people that they think this course is a speed course. I have not really seen anyone take it super fast. But then again, I have. So I love doing it. Also love hyping up these athletes. Speaking of athletes to hype up, we got Mark in Antioquia here, and here it is. Here's that speed I'm looking for here. Now, what turns a course into a speed course is, either it is a speed course, I wouldn't necessarily call our course a speed course, um, or athletes knowing that it's gonna be a race to a certain point. I think for some of these athletes with a lot of confidence in their abilities, 
might be thinking that it's a race to the cliffhangers, which is where first place is at this moment. <laughs> nice work. That was so smooth. Easy transition, Damon. Set it up at your gym, film it, get it first try. I think, I think the transition, Damon, it does look easy. Um, it's just a different angle to come in. And so I think what I'm seeing athletes do is they're just not really sure of the timing on when to spread out their arms and legs. Also the athletes that take it too fast, it never works out. Great work for Mark here. Mark is on the Neighborhood Ninjas board. Using those lock-offs, using that strength to get to the end here. All right, time to breathe, Mark, time to breathe. All right, I wanna see Mark get this. I, I mean, we all want to see Mark get this, but I really want to see Mark get this. This has been such a sticking point. All right, going with a forward backward approach and deciding to hold on to the front. I'm not sure if I like this. I'm not sure if I like this for too many swings. Here we go. Yes, makes the catch. Mark is actually opening up a gym with Taylor Johnson in Norwood. Coming up, oh my God, I did not think he was gonna get that at all. Going front ways to get the dismount here. Squeeze on that grip with the clear. Heather is losing her mind back there. So is Jane. Two athletes from the uh, female adult division. All right, the way that Mark did those wing nuts, guys, that was a lot of grip strength to hold that far. Now, Mark can fly, Mark can do big moves. This is not gonna be any problem for him. UFOs, a little sketchy for every athlete though. Let's see what he's got. He's lined up, good height, good precision. He's even a little bit further back, but doing okay. I see the grit face right now. Here we go, nice and lined up. Gonna need to throw it. Oh, oh no. Just missing it on that dismount. Greg, how are those ninjas matching on the way vitality? I think Jordan would probably just shut down for a week and wear it, but we'll see. But seriously though, I gotta give Jordan props. Jordan is one of the premier coaches um, in the New England region. He coaches so many beastly athletes. Um, Addy Herman's one of those names, Luke Dillon. Um, yeah, Noel, we have seen some reverse grip facing the wing ding. Um, somebody did that in the adult division. It worked out pretty well. The tricky part is getting the transition. Woo, nice work from Jordan there. Um, but yes, we have seen that, Noel. I, I'm not really sure why we haven't seen more people do it. I think it's just the jump out to it that worries some people. Um, actually, in the earlier wave, Jane Greenbaum went for that move, but she got kind of stuck in uh, switch grip, and that didn't end up working out. So I think people have seen that and just decided they may as well try for the, uh, the 180. But back to Jordan, you guys. Um, Jordan, I remember the first time I went to Jordan's gym. Um, it was for an OCR event actually, and he coached me over a wall. It was a tough wall to get over. I was trying to just run into it and kick off of it to get to the top, and I couldn't get it at the start of the event, and then by the end of it, with Jordan's coaching, I got there. Um, just known for being the guy that'll carry your chalk if you need it. Um, if you have a specific ninja goal, he can definitely give you a hand to reach that. Great work out of Jordan. Using that strength. Jordan hasn't been training as much because he's training other athletes. 
All right, I have some pretty high expectations for Jordan on this move. He set this transfer up at his gym. I don't think it was quite the same distance, um, but Jordan definitely knows the technique. He actually had quite a few athletes that he has coached through this very same transition. Uh, definitely strong enough to pull this off, so excited to see what he's got here. You hear his, uh, his cult of followers in the back cheering for him. There it is, there it is. Oh! Just missed with that right hand. I think Amari comes out of high exposure. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, guys. Oh, geez. Oh, geez. Oh, my God. Okay. That was a good save. Looks like we're going here. Nice work. Nice work. Nice work here as well. Again, these first couple of obstacles are not difficult for, um, not difficult for these elite athletes. It's really more about how you execute them and how that sets you up for the rest of your run. Do you execute them quickly and give yourself time to rest later on throughout your course, which might give you more success on some of these tougher obstacles that we're hopefully gonna get to see? All right, trying to make the efficient move here. Nice work, nice and precise. I do not know how these guys are holding on to that cannonball. <gasps> oh, wow. Almost lost it right off there, but he is still doing well. Taking a look at the clock. Three minutes, just under three minutes to finish the rest of the course. Pretty solid time to this point. There we go, setting it up. Nice, nice work. From Amari. I don't like where that hand is. Oh, okay. Switching it around. Alright, that's better. It looked to me like he was slipping. There we go. Nice. Get in the clear. Now guys, this is, that wingding transfer is a transfer that favors the patient athlete. You need to wait for exactly when your swing is set up. The stronger athletes, you'll see them going sooner, but that's because they have a little bit more of that control where they can kind of overcome the G-force that the swing gives you. Um, so that's kind of the differentiator, but definitely not taking anything away from the athletes that, that stick it out on that obstacle and just get through it. Cause I mean, it is furthest the fastest, not just fastest. Let's go! Oh! And just missing it. I didn't have quite the angle. Connor actually just graduated with his doctor of physical therapy. Little doctorate of physical therapy. Yikes. Um, I'm not sure what runner we are up to here, guys. I can tell you we've got a just under 40 elite athletes competing today. Um, and I want to see we're maybe 10 or 15 in. But like I mentioned before, I obviously can't do this right now. But you can go to the Ultimate Obstacles page to take a look at the run order. Keep moving. Keep moving. Come on. Just over 45 seconds to this point for Connor. Pretty much the fastest we've seen anybody get through here. But he doesn't really look like he's pushing the pace too much. Just like I said, smooth is fast. Got time to do it good. Going for 
Connor is 19 out of 38. Thank you, Emily. Emily, always super helpful with the stats. Emily's like my, my co-announcer here. Thank you, Emily, for all you do. I, I'll need to meet you in person someday if I haven't already. All right, let's go, Connor. There it is. Oh, no. And just missing it on that grab. The Jimja team like to go fast, but you heard Jordan, even though they have a bet, cautioning him to slow down a little bit. I definitely think he'll get this swing a little bit faster than Jordan. Nice work. Right here, right here. A pink ginger shirt for Jordan to wear. You know, Matthew, I like that idea. But we gotta get we gotta get Luke through a couple more obstacles first here. Now, 45 seconds through this point. Now, like I said, it's 147 through seven is the time to beat. So we're gonna need to see him get through the cannonball obstacle all right easy there we go not sure what happened for luke there just looked like he was second guessing that grip luke's breathing luke's breathing he's going to need to finish within the next 20 ish seconds if he wants to beat jordan I don't think he's really just going for that bet, though. I think he is going to do the best that he can. I remember watching some posts from the Jimja Instagram page and being kind of impressed by some of the precision stuff that they had up. Big pull. Keep it going. So Luke is going for... The swing here. There it is. There you go. Definitely a throw that Luke can easily make and get over. Nice. Making that landing. Keeping that chest forward. All right, you guys. This is going to be the decider of the bet because if Luke can get past this move, Jordan's wearing a gym shirt for a week. A pink one. Crop top. A gym crop top and a pink one. John is upping the ante here. We'll have to. Oh, it is a crop top. Oh, kind of exciting. Looks like he is struggling with this. There it is. Ah. Mm. And Luke is clearly a little frustrated with that result, but. All right, here comes Justin. Ooh, that was fast. This guy is moving quickly. Depending on the build up here, one backswing, let's go. One backswing, here it is. Nice work. Stick it. That right foot was a little bit far back, but not too much of an issue here for Justin. I've heard the name Justin Visco before usually surrounded by good things. He is moving efficiently through here. He's got coach Danny Adair coaching him. Danny was the 2020 NNL coach of the year. Justin likes to go fast. Oh no! Uh, <laughs> Qualify. Great work. Great attack through that. Okay. 
there it is. Toes to those bars. Ooh, she's there. She is there. Flying super high. Hey, nice work. Come on, Sarah, get this. Ah. And attacked that. I got a lot of respect for Joe as an athlete. He, this is a run to watch. We gave Joe some love in our pre-comp hype video. Um, just a lot of high expectations for him here. Definitely hoping that that ankle doesn't hurt him too much. I did see him kind of favor it a little bit. Getting the landing on that ankle with the brace on it. And I'm seeing a little bit of favoring going on here. Hopefully he gets the spider wall. And you saw him just All right, guys. Um, still an amazingly fast time to this point. I, you've got to give it to Joe. He. He's still pushing through this course, and he has gotten through these obstacles in a fast amount of time. The next thing that I might be nervous for him for is the next couple of obstacles with the big dismounts. This one won't be too bad if he sticks with the cannonball. Definitely in his wheelhouse to make the transition to the second Captain Hook carabiner. And I think we'll see him do that. There we go. And easier dismount. The next two, a little bit of a limp there. I don't know if you guys can see it, but this move is definitely something that Joe is able to do. Got the technique, easy, easy throw, casual. Nice. And now the dismount. Nailed it, saved himself. <laughs> we decided to be nice with that, uh, with that pole there. Doesn't sound like Joe likes UFOs. Now there is an obstacle like this similar on a &W. It's called Wait For It. And that was the, kind of the idea we had, connecting those two together. And it looks like that dismount was okay for Joe. He was able to land evenly on both feet. All right, you guys. All over, buddy, except for that cat back. Guys, we, we gave Joe some love on our pre-comp hype show because he's one of the most consistent athletes we have seen. Um, certainly one of the most consistent athletes that I have ever observed in my entirety in the sport of ninja. He just pulls it out. Ooh, I would have liked to have seen him cross over. Ooh. I shouldn't be surprised by this. Joe has great cliffhanger strength here. <laughs> Nice work. All right. I haven't mentioned this yet, and I can't believe I haven't, but Joe Morowski is also your 2020 NNL champion. Nice easy, nice so easy. defending his title, going for that qualifying spot. All right. Now you know Joe's been watching the live stream. You know that he has figured out the technique needed for this balance obstacle. Perfect, absolutely perfect. Just needs to get him self to that next one. All right, our first look at this giant lache. Joe has 30 seconds on the clock. He doesn't really have a lot of time to rest. He's gonna have to go. Here we go. Here we go. Here's the build. Here it is. Oh! That's a big lache. That is a big lache, you guys. Here coaching all weekend. All right, Joe, I will definitely 
let him know. Here we go. Nice. Great work out of Julian so far. Julian's been here coaching the last two weekends, and I gotta say, some of the more solid coaching advice to those athletes. You know, he's analyzed the movement, analyzed the timing, getting the stick on that spider wall. Looking a little uncomfortable in the spider wall right now, but making his way through slowly. Great clear right there. Excuse me, Sammy. You're all good. Ooh, and went for that move on the first one, which is the most efficient way to do it. If it doesn't work out though, it doesn't waste too much time. Getting that hook. Determined to get it on that second swing right there. Planning out his hands. Casual lock-offs. Casual one-arm lock-offs. Good precision. Ooh, I didn't think he was gonna get that out of there to be totally honest with you. Nice clear with about two minutes and 20 seconds left on the clock. I would have liked to see him get here with a little more time if we're going for a full course clear. Nice work, nice and high on that grab. Here it is. Oh! And just missing. Got this. We got we got the official word from Joe that Lucio's got this. Rachel Degut's making a bold claim here that Sen City is greater than Monstro. Well, Rachel, I mean Monstro's here and you're not, which makes me sad. I was really hoping we would see Rachel DeGutz here competing. We do have some Sensity athletes actually. And um, three of them are some of our ninjas to watch in this competition. But right now we're gonna watch Lucio nail this spider jump here. Excellent, excellent work. Wearing those high movement ninja shorts. I gotta get me a pair of those because I'll tell you what, it's hot here this weekend, but I love pie pants for comps because they have pockets. And if you've ever had to carry around a phone for live stream and a charger at the same time, y'all know my pain. Y'all know my pain. All right. Three minutes and 20 seconds on the clock right now for Lucio. Ooh, using that reach to get that hook first time. Is he gonna go without it? Yes, he is getting those feet down. Ooh. Oh boy. Oh jeez. Hey, great recovery. That unfortunately took up a little bit of time. We're now under three minutes left on the clock. Your athletes that have made it far into this course have had three minutes at the completion of this next obstacle that Lucio is just starting. So we're gonna have to see what this looks like for him. Again, completion is the name of the game. There's nothing to say that, you know, an athlete runs the timer out, but is still completing obstacles that could work in his favor here. Easy lock-offs for Lucio. Okay. Yes, Lucio. 
Nice, smooth movement through that obstacle. Lucio taking some nice, deep breaths. Now, Lucio is known as the Mustache Ninja. Um, I think he recently trimmed his mustache, actually. Two minutes left on the clock. She is pretty. Lucio is locked off, going with that forward grip here. Needs. Ooh. Good, good. I didn't like the looks of that and it looked like it was a bit of a struggle. Now Lucio has crazy grip strength. Um, ah. Those winging handles. I've jumped out to those a few times. Reese Matthews, everybody. Um, somebody asked for a run order update. After Reese, we have Dave Cavanaugh, Nate Pardo, and Jay Lewis coming up. So three monsters, one right after another, um, and being preceded by a monster. Reese has grown leaps and bounds this season, and I'm not just talking about height. I am talking about inefficiency. I'm talking about in um, course completions. You see him later in the run order, and that's because he has competed really well this season and gotten all of those points. Great work for Reese. Super fast to this point. Fastest I've seen. I'm not shocked at that. Reese is just a fast athlete in general, but he trains at Action Athletics where they don't know how to go slow. They really don't know how to go slow over there. Every time this weekend I saw a kid in an action shirt get up, I said, all right, I'm going to run for the next, you know, however many minutes it takes this athlete to complete the course. Lock-offs for days here. Great control. Ooh. Casually, one hand, one handing the giant cannonball. Guys, y'all don't know how hard that is. And if you do know how hard that is, you know how hard that is. That's a tough move. Here we go, Reese. Oh, we need a little more power. Oh, using that reach. I like when I get surprised on this obstacle. I really do. Great work for Reese here. Going for this dismount. Easy, lining up. Nice work. Nice work for Reese right here. All right, another high flying move. Nothing that Reese can't do. Reese has two minutes and 30 seconds at this point. It's a good amount of time for the rest of this course. Pop it. Nice. Awesome. Ooh, nice work. Now we just gotta get this dismount here. Here we go. On and past, fantastic. All right guys, we've got two minutes on the clock for Reese here. Plenty of time. Excellent. See that control? Ah, and Reese goes for the skip. That's a tough reach from that music in. I'm not used to seeing that from Dave. All right, you guys, so far, all right, never mind. I'm gonna just run now instead of talking. Dave completely skipped that first PVC. I don't know if y'all saw that. Looks like he wanted that there. And going. Dominant performance from Dave right now. Guys, we gave Kavanaugh a shout out in our, uh, in our pre-comp hype video because as I said, he still got it. Through that first half of the course, or first part of the course, in 35 seconds. 
the fastest I've seen anyone get through that to the sixth obstacle. So much love on the live stream from the New England Ninja community. Dave is a smart competitor. I think his strategy with going super fast through the front half of this course is that he is going to have time to rest before some of those bigger moves later on, like that giant lache at the end. You saw Joe Morawski move through the course at a pretty consistent pace. He got to the final obstacle with only about 30 seconds left. Joe hitting this move at about the same time that Joe did. Joe had about three minutes on the clock when he got here. Here we go, Dave. Easy. And now time for this next move here. Getting that swing where he wants it. Using that control. Here it is. Oh, nope. Not quite where he wanted it. Easy throw. And that's what separates the veterans from some of the newer ninjas. They are very calm when they get stuck in situations like that where their swing isn't quite going where they want. They don't start moving frantically. They feel out where their bodies are and they figure out how to direct it the way they want to go. This is how I know Dave has a plan. He's checking that clock, giving himself the amount of time he needs. He's going for the full clear here. And I think we will see if his strategy pays off and maybe perhaps influences the next couple of runners because if Dave going super fast through the front results in a clear of the course, we might see some other ninja athletes trying to match that fast time through. Great work out of Dave. Now time for some cliffhanger action. Taking a look at the clock to see how much time he has. He's breathing heavy, taking the headphones out. Time to focus, time to lock it in. We're seeing almost move for move right here. Taking a little more time. Oh no. Oh gosh. Pardo just appeared on last week's episode of American Ninja Warrior, putting up a super fast time through the course which is exactly what we will see here. Flying, flying. Got the stick. Great view of the back of Nate's head right there. Sorry about that, guys. The coaches have been great this whole weekend, though. We have been asking them to Please give the live stream some love so that we can see all of our athletes getting through the course and they have been fantastic. Looks like Nate's just gonna go for the move with the hug nice. and the feet out. Good work. Plenty of time right now. Slowing up that swing. Going for the big move. Oof. Ouch, that one hurt. That cannonball is not light. <laughs> well, it is light, but it's solid. And he whacked it pretty solidly. It also was like on the hook. Might have been a rough hit. All right, this move totally in part of wheelhouse here. But again, just gotta get that execution. Here we go. Oh! A miss on the grab for Pardo. I'm the same place as Jay, but that has absolutely zero bearing on what this athlete can do on the course.
She is gonna move quickly and efficiently. Like we said, Sen City athlete, wearing that Sen City team shirt with pride. Sen City is a ninja build. Woo! Let's go, Jay! Great stick. All right, you guys. Four minutes. Let's go. Through here, in now that's the fastest that I've seen. Starting this obstacle, right at about 3:55, about a similar time to uh, to Dave Cavanaugh's actually. So Sen City is a service that builds outdoor ninja courses or indoor ninja courses for you, so you can train at home. Nice, Run by Adam Burnett and Zach Day. Love the Sen City crew. What a throw from Jay. You'll see him go back one time and getting this dismount. Three minutes and 10 seconds to this point, comparable to what we've seen from other athletes. I would say he is on target here to get through this course. This is one of the iffier moves here, but not something that's gonna to be too much of a trouble. Easy work for Jay. Now we just need to see. Great. Now we gotta line up this dismount. Crushing it. All right, you guys. 2.30 for Jay. We'll see how much rest he takes. Jay is not taking too much rest. Jay is one of those athletes that can throw laches easily for years on end. So a couple big moves is absolutely nothing for him. This obstacle is actually called Watch Your Face. And you saw why you needed to if you have enough air to get there. That bar almost comes back to hit you. Great work from Jay. And he is miles ahead of Joe's time right now. Joe waited until 1.20 to go at this point in the course. Jay is going about a full 35 seconds ahead of when Joe went. I've seen Jay complete grip lines far longer and skinnier than this. Great work, easy work through this cliche. All right, here's a point where there's a little bit of a tricky, tricky moment here. Nice and low, I like what I'm seeing, getting that backswing. Gotta keep those feet up, perfect. Perfect, all right, here it is. Is he gonna link it all or is he gonna stop? He might link it all, you guys. Nope, nothing wrong with that though. He's got plenty of time. You know he's going for the clear on this move. Come on, Jay, here we go. Going for the full cast. looking so happy and satisfied. I would just like to highlight the fact that when you hit the buzzer. Let's go, e. Ooh, had to really fight for that stick right there. Not quite as crazy a fight as we have seen, but all right. 35 seconds or 40 ish seconds to this point. Not a bad time if he can give himself some efficiency through this run. There we go. Uh, 
Light work. All right, just about three minutes to this point. Jay had maybe eight more seconds on the clear of pirate ship. But he also had a little bit of a hang up on the middle one. So if Ethan can set this, he can easily make up that time. This looks good. Looks like he's gonna, ooh, wasn't quite ready to go for it. That's really, the only, there's a few places E could make up the time, but we'll uh, have to see if he can. Two minutes and 15 seconds at this point. So a little bit behind Jay's pace here. Beautiful. Still could be one of your finishers today. Still could be going for the podium spot. And you never know what's gonna happen. You never know when he might turn on the jets. It could be on the cliffhangers. It could be on the Lachaise, too. I think that might really be the only place that Ethan could make this up. Now, at this point, Jay was already moving on the cliffhangers. So I think we're more so going for the clear at this point. 15 seconds is hard to make up. Now, if you're wondering what is the point of those pirouettes, I'll tell you after we see Ethan make this. There we go. The purpose of those pirouettes, everyone, it brings your hand closer for the reach. So if you are doing, just bumping your hands over, you end up having a pretty sizable reach from the second to last rock climbing hold and those rounded cliffhangers are tough. All right, nice and low on the rope, about the right spot. Got a good little bit of a backswing. Great execution here. All right, here we go. Let's see if Ethan can get through here. These lachets should be absolutely no problem for Ethan. That last big lache, though, I think he's got it. How tired go. is he right now? Plenty of time, you get up there, come on. Going for a finish, going for the cast, here we go. If you've ever wondered why you should train a cast, it is for a Jonathan Godbout course. Yes! No. Oh! <laughs> so close! Casey was one of the only women to get through, almost through our drum hopper obstacle. She is, guys, I'd call her like the Joe Moravsky of the female division here. Um, she looks for those shortcuts. She analyzes the movement that is necessary. I do not think that you will see her make a fail on that spider wall like you did um, so many of the other female athletes. Great power. Sherry, we have, I think, less than five athletes left at this point. Here we go. Oh, no. And that was not going to throw me off the scent here. We will be able to tell yeah, here. This is a more casual pace for Matt. I think he is jogging through it. Noah, you really think this course is a speed course? 
<laughs> I'm, I'm always interested when I hear the athletes saying that this course is a speed course. I think it's a speed course and that you need to push the speed, but it certainly wasn't created to be a speed course. Matt's needing to lock it in here. There we go. Going for the big dismount. Easy work for Matt. This move here, also easy work for Matt. Getting a little. Whoa, yes. Oh my God. You saw it here first, ladies and gentlemen. That was the fastest I have seen anyone get through those cliffhangers. I didn't see, literally, no one linked that move today, this weekend, at all, ever. Of course, D'Amico does it first. 228. On pace with Jay's time right now. We talked about Matt in our pre comp review. He has the speed, he has the endurance. If he can put it all together, he could have the run of his life. Alrighty, guys, so Jay started moving here at about 155. More important at this point to make sure that you're going to complete the obstacles. Cap back should be no difficulty for Matt. He is a parkour athlete. I haven't seen anyone recover from this, but if I'm going to see off, anyone do it, push back, push back. Go, 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 go. it's going to be Matt. Commit to it. Here we go. Uh, Aye. And unfortunately for Matt, he to push the pace to get through it, but is speed really the most important skill to get through it? What if there was a longer time limit? Would it still be a speed course? I'm just curious to hear you guys' thoughts. Nice work from Nolan. So we just got an update uh, from Alex Cunningham with a couple of the stats. Oh no! We're anticipating, which, you know what? I'm happy about that uh, for our regionals course. Keep breathing, Luke, keep breathing. Let's go, All right, buddy. you guys. Luke Dillon is actually. Right, power on the back swing. There you go, Woo! you got it, bud. Spider. Turn those hips, Luke. Turn those hips. <laughs> Any gauntlet athletes here, Henry? Ah, uh, no, I don't think so. We do have one of our gauntlet analysts here, Kara Palillo, is actually running the Ninja Babes table. She came in early, early after uh, being on the analyst team yesterday. Um, so really cool. <laughs> We've been talking about that reach all day. Mm. All right. Oh, that's right. Lucio was also one of the analysts, and he just competed a little bit ago. All right. Great work out of Luke. Luke is just at three minutes, guys. 
I don't really like how much time I'm seeing him take on this. There it is. Nice work. There it is. <laughs> Luke shaking his head at himself, asking why he didn't throw that. All right, so Luke was far ahead of the pace. He was on the wingding at about 310, which is where your top athletes just finished. Um, but with the amount of time that he took on that, I don't think he's going to be that far ahead here. Depending on how long the build here takes for him, he's got 2.10 left on the clock. Again, Jay started that cliffhanger climb at about 250 or 155. So if Luke gets going here, he's going to be a little bit ahead. Definitely got the endurance for it. Noah predicting it's just the final move for Luke that's going to be a hard time for him. A fun fact about Luke that we just got shared by the Sun City team, he is afraid of cactus or cacti. Great work for Luke here. He's got 124 left. This is about where Joe Moravsky was during his run, about 120 at this point. Luke is just under 120, closer to 110. Oh no. A little too much of a spin there for Luke. We were definitely hoping to see. Woo! I did my best Rachel impression there, Rachel. All right, you guys may have just heard Matt Bradley chatting about his performance here in the past. And we did mention this on our pre-comp hype video. Matt has traditionally not done super great at our traditional comps. Um, always comes in with some high expectations, but hasn't been able to lock it in and execute. <gasps> oh boy, glad to see that save there. Sorry about the bad camera angle there, ladies and gentlemen. Plenty of time for Matt Bradley right here. I'd love to see him Nice. Great. Great work. And now you might be wondering why they need to be so efficient through those first couple of obstacles. Matt is going to finish this well ahead of the pace of the rest of the field as long as he is smooth. Not shocked at all to see him get that precision on a weird reach. He is one of the most skilled athletes I have seen when it comes to precision and finishing several seconds ahead of the rest of the field to that point. Figuring out this move, here it is. With the throw, crushing that dismount super fast. Almost three minutes right now. Well ahead of the rest of the field. Not shocked here. Big high flying moves, precise placement of hands. All of this is in Matt's wheelhouse. Oh my gosh. We're back. <laughs> and Matt is at the end of the course. Here we go. I will fill you in. I will fill you in on everything happened. So we have been having intermittent problems. Oh my God. Okay, everybody. Let's see how that prediction goes. Henry, if you get this prediction, um, you'll be 100%. 
Sick. Keep moving, Addy. Keep moving. Okay, I'm liking Good. the pace I'm seeing Stop from Addy so off. far. Here we go. All right, here we go. Here's the moment of truth. Definitely something Addy can stick. Hey, nice work, Addy. We expected nothing less. Here we go. Great work out of Addy. All right, you guys. Addy is here to pirate ship with 310. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing if we're going for a full clear here. Jay had about 45 seconds left after his full clear. So even if we are a little bit behind the pace, that's still okay. And she's gonna have to go, nice big throw, looks nice and lined up here. Awesome work out of Addy. All right guys, here's the, here's the move. Here is the move. Let's go, Addy. You can see the clock in the background there. She's gonna have a little bit less than two minutes once she gets off here. Yes! All right, here we go. Getting some predictions that she's gonna get these easy. Fantastic body control from Addy. Here we go. Looks like she's struggling to figure this out. There it is, here it is. Nice work. And a clear for Addy. All right guys, we've got 135 on the clock for Addy right here. All right, here we go. Addie's showing us why she is the top point leader in the NNL right here. Nice catch. Honestly, I'd be shocked if Addie fell at this point. Nice work from Addie. Great throw from Addy. All right, guys, 45 seconds left on the clock. Is it enough for Addy to get to the final obstacle? I think we might get to the final obstacle and run out of time if we push the pace here. Oh. And Addy going out on the cliffhangers. You're good. All right. Here we go. There you go. Keep breathing, too. Good. Nice. Good. Right, good. Nice work, True. Here we go. Awesome job, True. Great work. Nice, let's go. No, Ooh, on, let's go. geez. Great save out of true. Here we go. All right, easy work for true at this point.
Hugging it, going for that super efficiency. Nice work out of True. Awesome. All right, similar time to where Jay was here. Three minutes. Chu also has phenomenal body control. Quickest turnaround I've seen on that. Getting some pointers from Coach Jordan on getting that flying motion, getting that right motion. You heard me say it before that this obstacle favors the patient. And True was patient with that. Here we go, let's get in, take a look at this grab here. Ooh, sorry about that guys. Not the best angle that I've had on that one on today. Just want to make sure we don't lose the Wi-Fi here like we did during Matt Bradley's run. Awesome clear. All right. True is looking at his time, 144. Loads of time to get started. That is about 10 seconds behind where Jay was. Oof. Tough hit, but he gets the clear. All right. Working on getting through these movements here. Great positioning from True. This is, that was the hardest part for True. All right, you guys. Here we go. Links all the way. This is definitely in his wheelhouse. Here it is. Getting up there for the finish. What's the time? 3.48 for the clear. Oh my gosh. About five seconds behind Jay's pace. So Jay is going to take it, but still a phenomenal win. A phenomenal run for True. Oh my gosh. How is he going to get down? I don't know. A very casual drop down. I was expecting a flip or something there. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we will be back for the award.